Hey guys, it's Lurti. Um, today, today I'm going to be taking you along with me to do an enclosure build for this enclosure down here. If you guys have followed me long enough, you will remember this is actually Soleil's baby enclosure. Here is Soleil now, isn't she amazing? Um, but she's getting an upgrade and that will be for a different video. But today I wanted to show you a really cool snake that's gonna be going into that old enclosure. Um, it is my Egyptian false cobra. You guys have not seen it because it has been in quarantine. Actually, it's female, you haven't seen her. Uh, but I'm really excited to show it to you and I thought, what the hell, I'd make a video and try to record myself actually building this out since so many of you guys love my enclosure builds and the way I design them. So. If you are interested in that, then keep on watching. This is where I have all of the ingredients that we are going to be using in today's enclosure build. And I got some really awesome pieces, so I'm hoping that my vision for this little cage pans out. Um, I picked out some desert stone. It's in the color Sonoran Ochre. I've got some grape wood and some different climbing pieces to put in there. This really neat piece of grape wood that's sort of like a hide. I also got some Repti sand. Do not confuse this with calcium sand. That shit is horrible. This is Repti sand. This is a great natural substrate for anything that's arid and it's in the color desert white. So I'm really excited to mix those two mediums together. And of course, no enclosure build would be complete without some artificial foliage. And I got these all from Hobby Lobby. I think this cost me like $25 for the little succulents and cactus and stuff that I got from there. But this is everything that I'm going to be putting in this build. Obviously, I will add a water dish in here as well. The enclosure is a three by two by two enclosure. It has an LED light in here right now, which I do plan to change for a UVB because I think this species would actually really like that. And then up here, if you can see that, that is a radiant heat panel. So that is what's actually heating the enclosure. Uh, this is from Pro Products Radiant Heat Panels. That company is absolutely amazing. They have incredible customer service. Their products are so good. I highly recommend them. And you can see it's really dirty in here. It's not actually dirty, I swear. Um, this is leftover coconut fiber, but I figured whatever, I'm not gonna even clean it out because the cage is super clean and um, I'm just gonna go right over it with the sand. So that should be perfectly fine. Also, can we take a minute to just admire my beautiful acrylic nails? My friend did these for me. They were actually made using Mitsuki's Shed which if you guys are not familiar, Mitsuki is my false water cobra. So this is her actual literal snake shed in my nails and they are beyond epic. Like, holy crap. Sure, which substrate to start with? I think maybe I should start with the bigger stuff and then mix the sand. Yes, that's what we're gonna do. The sand is so heavy. Oh my gosh. Hmm, I was not expecting it to look like this. That is so odd. And I could have literally just gone outside and got this out of the desert. Don't know how much to put in here. I'm guessing I should just do the whole bag so we can make a good layer. And then we'll spread it. Okay, there we go. Desert sand is in. We just have to spread it out in here and add the other white sand in. It's looking pretty good so far though. It's a cool color. Substrate numero dos. This stuff is so pretty. So, so pretty. I love the white sand color. Let's see if I can do this. We're going, we're going all the way with it. We're using all of it. Perfecto. Oh, if you guys are wondering, this is the probe that's connected to a thermostat that tells my radiant heat panel up here how hot it's supposed to be getting. So this little probe will eventually be somewhat hidden in here, but it is important that it remains exposed so that it can control the temperature of the radiant heat panel. By the way, I'm sorry that I didn't take these doors off. When I first got this enclosure, I took them off to put a lock on and they were such a pain in the butt to get off. So I have zero interest in trying to do that again. So we're just gonna work with it with the doors on and 
just mix all this substrate together to a big sandy dirt mess. It actually didn't go as far as I thought it would. Like it's not quite as thick as I had assumed before, but I think it's gonna look really, really good in here. It's a little bit clumpy. There's like some rocks in it. Interesting. But that's all part of the desert aesthetic, baby. We just gotta roll with it. I live in Arizona, so I freaking know, okay? Don't tell me what I'm supposed to do with my desert terrarium. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Substrate layer has been added. I'm thinking what I wanna do next is put the grapewood pieces in. And I kinda wanna do maybe the bigger one here, closer to their basking spot. Because uh, this is where all the heat and basking is gonna be. This is where it's gonna be the cool side. What is this? It looks like a peanut butter ball. Oh. Are you freaking kidding me? I got sand on the floor. I swear, I'm not mad at it. Real talk though, how realistic is this barrel cactus? Like, wow, it's amazing. Totally kidding. Anyway, still think it's gonna look good somewhere in here. So we just gotta find a place for it and maybe cut this annoying stem. But this is how I have the wood set up so far. So this is the cool side of their enclosure. This is where I'm gonna give them their hide that they can be in. Because I do wanna encourage them to be out more, I'm not gonna give them a hide on the basking side. I'm just gonna make it a little bit secure by putting some overhanging wood and some foliage in here, but I'm not gonna put like a traditional hiding spot here because I want them to kind of be out in the open a little bit more and this will definitely encourage that behavior. Obviously, if your snakes are not thriving with that kind of compatibility, then you'll wanna move it around and maybe offer them a hide over here. But for now, we're gonna try it this way. I think it's gonna work fine. Okay, so here's our plant selection. Again, all this stuff is from Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use all of these, but I think they'll probably all work in here. So let's get to arranging. Also, this one's really cool because it's pliable. So each one of these, like the whole leaf has like, how do you explain it, wire inside. So you can mold it and shape it and form it, which is really cool. So I'm gonna play with this for a second here. Get it how I want. See, so far so good. This one doesn't really bend, but check this out. Ah, Ta-da! It doesn't even fall apart after you do that. So this will be perfect like this. And I'm thinking maybe somewhere right up front here would be a good spot for that one. This one's like really heavy. Let's see if it does the same thing. Come on, come on, come on, Hobby Lobby plant. Oh, no, there's a wire in this one. That's not gonna work. Let's reattach it and we will bend this one so that the wire is not exposed to the snakes. Also, if you guys keep hearing me speak in plural, that is because I am eventually planning to put a male in here as well. I have a female right now, but would like to have a breeding pair in the future. How does that look over there? That's kind of a neat color contrast, isn't it? Should we use this one? Ugh, it's too stupid not to use it. We gotta find a place for this. I just ripped the nub off on this cactus as well. So now we can just plant him wherever we want. Like maybe right there. So cute, love it. Now we just need to reposition our probe so that the probe can actually read the heat. As long as it's above the sand, I'm fine with it. And I might actually put it like right there too. That looks good. All right, there we go. How does that look? All right, I'm going with white. It looks quirky anyway, because of the cat face and the meow. So this is the final product down here. It looks really, really cool. And I'm hoping that my Egyptian false cobra will thrive in here. I think this looks amazing. I think it's gonna be perfect for my snake. So let's go get our snake and put her in here. I haven't mentioned this fact prior to now, but this is actually a rear fanged venomous colubrid. So it does have venom similar to my false water cobra. This is an Egyptian false cobra, not to be confused. The venom toxicity is somewhat unknown on these. Although honestly, I do feel like most rear fang colubrids are insanely over-exaggerated on venom toxicity and it is so frustrating. So 
do not be afraid of her. <laughs> she is fine, but I will definitely be cognizant when handling her because I would rather not get envenomated. So let's do this nice and easy, shall we? This is a juvenile female, but I read that they get about four feet. Oh. You're squirmy. Hang on. Wait. Wait. You squirmy girl. She's not having it. I don't know if I can do this one hand and she keeps backing up. Oh. Backing up. Backing up. Backing up. Backing up. Backing up. Backing up. <laughs> Come here. You're so tolerant. But what are you doing? All right. What? Now we're at this point. Gosh, you're so cute. At least you guys can get a good look at her. She's adorable. Okay, so I've got her and a piece of hair, excellent. And I'm going to let her go in here. Try not to stress her out handling her too much. What do you think? Do you like it in there? She's like, I'm going straight for the hide. Bye, see you later, I'll never come out again. So I need to get some water added in this dish, but look what we have back here. It's a tiny Egyptian false cobra head watching us. Listen, I'm doing the best I can, okay? I have Dasani. It's not the freshest H2O in the world like Chandler has, but it's gonna work just fine. It's pretty fresh. It's almost as fresh as his precious H2O. To be completely honest, I think I do wanna add some more natural elements, but I have some really cool like desert sticks and sagebrush that's dried up and stuff like that. So I think I actually will probably go collect some of those things from the desert here where I live because it's so abundant and free and possibly try to work those into this design a little bit as well, because I feel like it's just a little bit weird and sparse and artificial with this stuff in here. So let me do some quick revisions and we'll see where it ends up. Hey guys, so now I am on my way out to the literal desert to get some stuff for this enclosure. Reptile girls be like, I know a spot and then take you here. So I'm getting a bunch of this like scrub brush stuff. I brought my handy scissors. And so I'm just kind of collecting like whatever I find out here that looks appealing to me. These are all super pretty grasses too. I really like them. I think they look really cool in the enclosure and they're easy to sanitize, easy-ish. This is really good terrain to be wearing flip-flops by the way. Okay, I think we got everything that we need. So I have returned from the desert. I got all these goodies. They are awesome. Um, they're pretty much already sanitized. I looked them over, but it's literally 115 degrees out there. So I think we're good. This thing is flaming hot. It literally burned my arm when I was bringing it up the stairs. So that's great. But yeah, I think this will be a cool basking rock. We're about to revamp this from very artificial and Hobby Lobby to natural, which is much more my style. As I'm thinking about this logically, I put the rock over here so it can heat up under the radiant heat panel for basking, but I'm gonna be really careful with all of this dried brush around the radiant heat panel. It's pretty much fireproof, but like if stuff touches it, it won't burn you, but it does get really, really hot. So you don't wanna leave your hand in contact with it. So I think I'm gonna put most of all of my scrub brush and everything over in this area. I've already got this little pom-pom weed over here, whatever they call it. I was gonna use this stupid little thing, but I wasted it. Ugh. And I also wasted that. Brilliant. This is what the enclosure looks like now. I think it looks a lot more naturalistic than it did with all of the fake foliage. I think a lot of this dried brush really makes it look quite a bit nicer. And overall, I'm really happy with the way that this looks. I think the snake will really like it. It's visually appealing and nothing is touching that radiant heat panel. So everything should be totally safe in here. I like it. I like it a lot better. I'm glad that I decided to go out there and get all this stuff and actually change it. But tell me what you guys think. Did you like it better before with the artificial stuff or do you like it more with this naturalistic decor? Really, really like the effort that I put into this in making it look a little bit more natural because I think it looks so cool in there 
It's still pretty whimsical with, you know, the little pom-pom weeds or whatever you would call these pieces. I think they just really add like some cool texture and dimension in there. I did put the cactus in there. I knew you guys were gonna throw a fit, so there he is. Yeah, everything else looks really good and I love the way it turned out. Well, this whole mama is out exploring right now. There she is. Look at her. Isn't she so cute? Really cool snake. Look at the bags under the eyes. Look at those markings on her face. She's got that really white belly. And then it just blends into that sort of like rattlesnake cobra look. She's so cool. Oh my god, so I literally caught her doing this behavior. It's called polishing their scales. It is the weirdest shit ever. Like, did you see that? What she was just doing? so bizarre and she's able to flatten her body out so much just a second ago she had like an entire panel of her body just completely spread open and flat it looked so weird A strange little snake Okay boys, we finished it. My Egyptian false cobra enclosure is completed. It is down there. Um, this is like my bedroom area of my house and I have my rack. Needle is all the way up here. She is my Gonyasoma bulgari. She's a rhino rat snake. Um, here is the Russian rat snake. This is a Laffy shrinkii. This is Jess. And then down here is my Egyptian false cobra. So yeah i'm really excited with how the enclosure turned out kind of a weird video because i like completely did the enclosure like really synthetic with all of the hobby lobby stuff that's back there and then i decided to just change it at the last minute and do something a little bit more natural but um yeah i hope you guys liked this sort of vlog style impromptu video admittedly i've been in sort of the void lately as i like to call it just really depressed and stressed out so i haven't been too interested in creating a lot of content for you guys but i'm glad that i was able to do something today um if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up if you hate it thumbs down um leave a comment leave a hate comment if you want whatever you want um but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this. As always, thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.